The following case is a 42-year-old right-hand dominant female with a nine-month history of recalcitrant right shoulder pain. She had tried and failed conservative measures and on exam had positive impingement sign with intact rotator cuff integrity. The case begins with diagnostic evaluation of the subacromial space, localizing the calcific depositions within our rotator cuff. A spinal needle is used to trephinate the calcium deposits in an effort to break up some of the debris. A mechanical shaver is then introduced to remove the calcium depositions as well as to further allow for isolation of the calcium deposits. The spinal needle is reintroduced to help break up the remaining calcium. The shaver is then reintroduced and we gently palpate the rotator cuff to milk out the remaining calcium. The shaver is then used to remove this from the subacromial space. At this point we can evaluate our rotator cuff to examine our defect. The rotator cuff itself is then palpated to ensure that there is no full thickness defect. We then locate the lateral aspect of the humeral head to identify our starting point for placement of our guide pin. The guide pin is introduced through a lateral portal and mounted into place. The mechanical shaver is then used to remove any fascia from around the guide pin to allow for smooth entry of the graft over top of the pin. The graft is then introduced on the loader and we make sure that we have adequate coverage from anterior to posterior as well as medial to lateral. At this point the graft can be unfurled and placed into position. An accessory portal is then utilized to place our cannula. Through the cannula we can insert our rotator cuff tendon staples which are made of PLA. The staples are then introduced through the graft into the rotator cuff. I typically uh, tend to place my staples along the medial margin to allow for good fixation. As we work medial and lateral we can then secure the graft into place to allow for removal of the insertion guide. Once the graft has been secured along the medial margin, we can then allow access to the lateral aspect of the graft along the footprint. Our lateral pins can then be placed into the rotator cuff to allow for smooth delivery of our peak staples. Typically, two peak staples are all that are needed along the lateral footprint. Once this is complete, we then take the shoulder to a full range of motion to ensure adequate fixation as well as no further impingement. 